Hello and welcome to the Off Grid Down Under podcast and video series. Hey guys, Melissa here from Off Grid Down Under and we are chatting with James Field today. I never remember what your title is. You have to say it again. Uh, General Manager, Commercial and Product. I should learn that off by heart. <laughs> it is a mouthful, it's fine. Oh, that's <laughs> all right. But what he is basically is an expert in the field of what we do at MDC, which is release brand new products all the time with a lot of product development and enhancement. And just off the back of what we've just done, which is release a brand new range of seven products with the Fort on-road series. Did I get the name right? Yep, Fort SR. Fort on, SR on-road, on-road series. series. You were almost there. I know, I know. And I just thought it'd be really exciting if we actually speak to you about what it's like to work for a company that is so committed to bringing out and improving its product, but bringing out a whole new range in a short amount of time. And I think it'd be really great to communicate with the audience. What does that even look like? What's the process behind it? Where do we even get the concept for bringing out a whole new range when we were doing really great with the off-road <laughs> range? Yep. And yeah, just talk about it in the stages of what's involved and what it looks like. Because I think a lot of people are interested to to know behind the scenes of what happens and that's your forte yeah so. for sure um so i think the, the the best spot to start is uh i guess talking about working for a company that is committed yeah. to wanting to improve their product and yeah. launch new models and and not necessarily happy just to go you know what we're doing okay now mm. always thinking about what's the latest greatest thing what can we can improve on what are our customers saying yeah so i think that's the first element you need to have that culture as a company mm. to drive that mm. innovation to drive the new model development otherwise if there's no appetite from the top and i'm speaking about um vaughn yeah, uh, yeah in vaughn his capacity the, the yeah, yeah. Um, if there's no appetite at the top Mm. then you're not going to drive that through the business. So Vaughan's always been very, very forward thinking, Mm. quite a visionary in that space about what's the latest and greatest thing, how can we do things. So very, very lucky to work um, with Vaughan and and have Vaughan's trust in Mm. allowing myself and and my team and the company to to go and spend a lot of time, effort, resources um, in developing all these new models. And Mm. the Ford SR series uh, is a good example of that. So... um, a lot in the background, as you said, a lot behind the scenes that I think people probably wouldn't appreciate that, that happens um, yeah. and how long it takes, uh, what's involved, whether that be regulatory, marketing, sales. It, there are so many elements to the puzzle. I, I think of, a bit, of it like a big jigsaw puzzle and it all, you know, all the pieces are scattered everywhere and you over time it all starts coming together and you need to know a lot of different things and kind of bring it all together so at the end you have a you know have a finished product so yeah oh absolutely but that can really be overwhelming <laughs> so we'll do, we'll do it in stages <laughs> sure. but how do you get so at some point in time someone in the in mdc has said i feel like we need an on-road yeah. range yeah so i think So I think that's a really good point to bring up. So what we have now at MDC is we have a setup group of of select staff as let's call it a think tank or a model development uh, group. So we meet anywhere from every three months, every six months, Mm -hmm. and that is exactly the platform for that. So we go through, I talk about, okay, what have we achieved? What's working? What hasn't worked? We look Mm -hmm. at some, you know, some data other things and then basically then it's over to everyone else and we talk about okay where are we heading what's the next Mm. five years look like um Mm. and things like that so that sets the scene and then from there yeah so that's that that's where it starts Mm. from there we then look at it from a commercial sense uh we look at things from a regulatory sense is it going to work because we'd all love to build the best everything but Mm. sometimes there's so many restraints in that space um so we'll go and do a lot of homework um, and then we'll start working with our uh, exclusive offshore, offshore um, partner manufacturing facility mm-hmm. and the engineers there and we'll provide them all the information they need to know. Um, we set basically the project brief of exactly what we need to do yeah. um, and then we work tirelessly with that countless trips to the factory going over through things. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you're hands on, you're over there working face to face with them for sure so yeah, i've got okay. a i've got an engineer over there right mm-hmm. now working yeah. on some projects and i would suggest there's probably never a time where there's not someone either there or on their way to our factory so we mm-hmm. are it is very much a mutual partnership we're very lucky to have a very long standing relationship with our 
uh, China factory. Well, it's a dedicated factory, isn't it, it is. to MDC? Yeah, yeah. you're right. Yeah, mm. so uh, exclusive to us, uh, and we've both grown together over the 10 year period that we've worked with this yeah. factory. That's so. the nicest thing actually, I learned that the other day, and, and Vaughan talks about it actually in his podcast episode, which I think is the third episode, mm -hmm. where we sort of started out and grew together, yes. like hand in hand partnerships, so it's a really, it's a, it's a relationship, it's not just something that's just, you know, gone and shopped around and found a supplier, it's a, it's a dedicated relationship that's an MDC only yes, factory. Absolutely. Yeah, correct. That's okay. right. And we're not just they're not building something and saying, There you go, let's sell that, let's yeah. put an MDC sticker on it. Yeah, yeah. Far removed from that. It's At the, the end opposite. of the day, we MDC, we are setting the tone, we're setting the project brief, what's the specification, what does it need to weigh, what's the design gonna be like, what's mm. the layout? And then we work through that. So then I work with the engineering team on that one. And, it, you know, sometimes these things quite take a bit of time. Um, everything is fully 3D modeled um, in, you know, 3D software. Yeah. Um, incredibly good. You can see all of them. You can rotate them. You can see exactly what you're working on. Then we go into prototype. Mm -hmm. So then we work and build a full prototype exactly as we need it to spec. Like a full size absolutely. model. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Okay, that's absolutely. so cool. So wow, that's a pre, huge pre, cost investment as well. Absolutely. And we will build at least one prototype of every single model we've Just ever to released. See it, feel it, touch sure. it. And, okay. Because there's only so yeah. many things. Yes, you can do a lot of things on 3D modeling and 3D CAD, mm. and, and it will iron out a lot of the, the potential problems and yeah. functionality things. But you still need to sit in it. But yeah when you physically make it and you go oh you know what that probably wasn't as good as what we thought it was going to be yeah. or we could tweak this so absolutely we'll always build a, a full-size mm. working prototype mm, that happens over in the factory in china yes yeah. absolutely um and then we will do a full prototype verification so we'll uh, that will be usually uh test towing, real life testing, full validation, mm. full regulatory compliance testing. So checking whether all of our clearances are right for all of the rules. Mm. Um, then we'll obviously weigh it, make sure that the weight is where we expected it to yes. be. We can simulate a lot of that in 3D. So we know mm. roughly how much it will weigh, but until you physically built it to the spec you want and physically weigh it, yeah. you never know. So weight is incredibly important as we all know in, mm. um, in caravanning. So, We'll weigh it, then figure out, okay, have we got enough payload? Have we got this and that? So there's a lot of stuff that goes into mm. that. Um, from that prototype, then, as I said, we'll create a report or work with them. And, and sometimes, and I, I can think of a couple of models where we've made over 200 changes oh, after, wow. after doing the prototype. Because I'm just going to say, you're a detail guy. <laughs> <laughs> so we do a little bit of work behind the scenes. There's something I've come to notice about you. But that's a great personality trait. And I guess your team are all details mm. people too. So there's five of you guys? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're right. So and, Yeah, and so I guess you're all incredibly highly detailed people. So that's how you come up with these 200 <laughs> modifications. Yeah, and it, it's always good to catch these things at this time, right? Like yeah. we want to try and launch the as best as product as we can. Mm. Um, so catching these things in the prototype, mm. whether it's functional, and, and some of these things are very, very minor. But as you said, you know, it's all around the devil, but the devil is in the mm. detail. It really, yeah. really is. Um, so we go through, we, we create these reports, as I said, up to sometimes 200 things that we'll amend and then mm. we'll go through. But then, depending on what it is, we'll actually build a second prototype sometimes. Yeah, wow. um, and then we'll go through and, and then I'll usually go over again and, and uh, to our China factory um, and do a full check again or we'll get it back and if it's something to do with a real-life testing scenario, mm. we'll make sure we get it back and we'll go for a test trip and, and figure things out. So yeah. absolutely in no way do we decide to to cut a timeline short for any particular reason, we always make sure we do things right. So Wow. So when you say take it for a test trip, like that's over in China or you bring it no, no, here, for here. here so to Australian conditions? For sure. Yes, I absolutely. So, so the, cool. the XT19 uh, HRT model we launched last year, that yeah. one went on a trip. I think it was Big Red Bash it went yeah, to well, as Daniel. part of its yeah. as for that was a that was a, a test trip. And his episode just actually came out and he spoke about that, yeah, and, and, and about the changes that he suggested oh, as absolutely. well as a customer, as a user. So Dan Dan was sending yeah. me videos, photos, <laughs> suggesting. It was fantastic yeah. because, it's, yes, you, you learn a lot in 3D modelling, then you learn a lot in the prototype, yeah. but then once again, the further you go, real-life testing, until the person's physically yeah. using it in that environment, 
you learn even more. And there's no way he would have like let it like, put anything. He would have put it all under a big test. It yes. would have not have been anything let off the hook. For sure. So that's so great. Okay, we're getting our customers even to do this and getting them involved. Yeah, that's absolutely. Fantastic. Yes. Yeah. So then uh, from the prototype stage, the report, um, find out all these things, tweak, and then we go into production. Mm -hmm. So then from that mm -hmm. point, then the whole project behind the scenes shifts to focus to sales material, marketing material, mm -hmm. uh, regulatory approvals if we need them, um, usually done in the prototyping stage, but a lot of things you can't get final sign off until yeah. you've got it all signed off. Because as I've said in, I think, another podcast I've done with you, there's countless rules, 250 yeah. alone in just what we're looking at for the RV map program. You've yeah. got other rules in various areas, electrical, gas, plumbing. Yeah. Um, so again, detail orientated things, but very important that we're doing. Um, so a lot of the stuff in the background for the reg regulatory approval part yeah. of that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, production um, and then uh, working with the sales and marketing team, getting everything ready pre-launch, which is a, usually a fairly hectic time, but well, a very is. exciting time. Photo shoots, video yes. shoots, you know, putting together brochures and the brand itself and the messaging. There's a lot that's involved. Actually, just circling back for a second, because I don't know if we touched on it, we do do the QA process in Australia, mm -hmm. which is really stringent, what we just talked about. But there is, it happens over there in China too. So it's like a double lot of QA, is that correct? For sure. Yeah, so we have a number right. of quality gates in our China factory mm -hmm. um, through every section of build, whether that be, you know, chassis build, mm -hmm. then through to general body build, final finish. Um, but then it goes through our pre-delivery section in China and goes through mm -hmm. a rigorous uh, QC or QA process. Mm -hmm. There, The gentleman who runs that department, um, you were talking about me being detail driven before, <laughs> this guy is next level. So oh my God. Um, he will pick up on things that are uh, incredibly brilliant. So oh. um, so yes, certainly mm -hmm. part of that is is our, but so before it even leaves our, our mm -hmm. China factory, it's already gone through a lot of these quality gates and processes. Um, then comes over to our three assembly facilities in Australia. So we have mm -hmm. one in Brisbane, we have one in Perth, and mm -hmm. we have one in Melbourne. Mm -hmm. um, goes through the set assembly process there, mm -hmm. and then goes through a secondary, uh, another QC again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, checking everything, and mm -hmm. then again when it gets to the showrooms. So we, as uh, through our processes, and certainly di driven through our ISO 9001 um, mm -hmm. certification, ha has driven you know that level of of uh, QC and, and process for us to, to at the end of the day, provide our customers with uh, the best quality van that we can. Wow. So just being specifically then about the the Fort SR series, the on-road caravans that we've just put out, so the whole range, you've just done this with seven caravans in a range. Yes. What's the time frame that, that, that this took, as well as all the other stuff that we've done? That's you know, we've right. been releasing caravans the whole time. Yeah. We're always making improvements. What's the time frame that this is executed it in, and and just sort of, sort of share a little bit of that experience of what that's like to bring out a whole brand a whole brand new range. Twenty twenty four has been busy, as yeah. you said. Um, okay. So the Mark three range we've also launched early yeah. uh, late twenty twenty three, and then into key shows in twenty twenty four, and then in amongst all of that, the Ford SR series. Um, it does it does differ depending on what you're working on and how long it takes, but sometimes they can take anywhere from six months to 12 months to 18 months to two years. And it, it all Easily. does. Absolutely. And it depends on things that you will find through the process will mm -hmm. always then somewhat change your timeline, but launching seven models in one go as a series, um, the very, very big achievement for the team. And I, I couldn't be more proud of the team and in, in what they've achieved. Well, your name was, you know, a little muddy, there for a bit in the marketing department, <laughs> but we got over it pretty quickly. Yes. But look, it's very fun. As you said, it is really fun to be working for a company that's very progressive and very future thinking. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say, actually is leading the way and actually, you know, people are, are observing and following, you know, I think that's really exciting. How is that one of your favorite things about working yeah, with you know, MDC and because you come from the, an industry background, so you've actually come out of the industry, which is, Champion, championing good practice across all of the companies and actually come into a company to work with them. So Yeah, it, having s the ability to work for someone who will embrace that yeah. and will give me the autonomy and the trust 
to do what I do best mm. uh, is incredibly good for me. I, I guess there'd be nothing worse than, than having all these things to offer mm. and feeling this restraint because, you know, we, we can't do X because of this or, or any mm. such thing. So mm. having someone, and I'm talking about Vaughan again, um, that does trust his team, has this vision, is mm. genuinely dedicated to building one of the best products in the industry mm. um, and continually putting out to market new models because the, the market is ever-changing, the customer is ever-changing yeah. um, and so is the landscape, whether that's, um, you know, uh, the economy and things like that. So we must always be paying attention mm. to, to what's happening around us to ensure that we've always got something to help a potential customer because at the end of the day, we want to get people into an MDC and them to go and have a good time. Yeah, and I love that. So at the time of making this, like we've literally just launching the series, the seven, the seven caravans within that series, is can I even talk about the future? Is there something else in the pipeline, or are you just going to say calm down and let's just launch this? <laughs> oh and... no, there's uh, there's always something in the pipeline. So absolutely, I, I had a meeting with the the team actually earlier this week and we came up for breath for about three hours after the <laughs> the Ford SR series launch and yeah. I was straight into you know this is the next thing this is the next target mm. so um, yeah absolutely no downtime for us um, but I think it's incredibly exciting times yeah. plus we've got um, our US business which we haven't touched on but we've got MDC yeah. USA as well and there's a, a lot of opportunity there um, so exciting to be able to work across our Australian product range as well as our um, US product range. Yeah, well, thank you so much for explaining the process to us. Like I've been around and, and observed and watched it from behind the scenes, but you just really made it very clear about all the things that go on. One thing about our caravans is that we have an awful lot of accessories and components that go into the build of the caravan. And I know that we use a lot of trusted brands. Do you want to like talk us through that, about those relationships and what that actually means for the end product? Yeah, for sure. I think that's a, another key thing with MDC that perhaps others don't pay attention to as much as what we do mm. is we try and align ourselves with trusted suppliers and trusted brands. So we, we fiercely use the likes of Truma, Dometic, Thetford, mm. um, even this fan here um, from, from Coframo. We choose to use the genuine product mm. because we know it provides a better con customer outcome for us. So we're not just going and choosing a cooktop because it's cheap or, or yeah. an air conditioner because we can get it cheaper we will choose particularly these key components so i'm talking about refrigeration air conditioning cooking things like that where it really matters mm. we will make sure that we align with a reputable brand even with electronics so we use all projector electronics um, mm. in all across all of our range in australia um, and that's really really important because they have a good reputation that's what they're best at yeah but what it also do does is the customer has support from those companies as well yeah. in Australia. Yeah. So yeah. Dometic agents, Thetford agents, Truma agents, things like that. So that's really, really important. Another really key thing I think we should talk about in terms of our parts and components and let's call it stuff in our vans. <laughs> yeah. That's my language, thank you. That's okay. Um, <laughs> is we have in our China factory, a it, this lab is huge. We have a full mm. testing lab. Mm. To, to test things like vibration, UV, um, heat exposure. Mm. And basically, before we onboard any key product, mm -hmm. we will put it through this testing regime to make sure that it's going to hold up to the harsh Australian conditions. Yeah. Again, yeah. something I'm not overly sure that many other companies do. Mm. And some of these machines and, and uh test equipment that we have invested in in our China factory is incredibly expensive mm. but we know that if we do that right the first time yeah then it pays dividends for the customer at the end of the day which is the most important thing so that's an incredible investment then really because this is a I like to always point this out this is a family owned business it's not run by a big conglomeration it's a family run business so it's a personal investment into bettering the caravanning experience, but the industry as a whole. Absolutely, so. yeah, for sure. Yeah, a huge mm -hmm. investment by, um, by Vaughan um, into research and development, mm -hmm. technical departments, after sales service, things that he knows will give, uh, at the end of the day, a better product to our customers. Mm, and, and as you say, a better experience a better in the experience long run. For sure. yeah, yeah, fantastic. Thank you so much. No as worries. always, it's a joy to speak to you, James. Always articulate, always explain it in the best way possible so we understand. Uh, I really feel like there should be a field trip happening to the Chinese factory very soon. 
I'd love to interview you over there another time when you're actually going through this process and sort of show it by first hand. No worries. So thank you very much. And congratulations actually on the new launch of the Fort SR on-road caravan series. It's so thank fantastic. You. And for you to explain this to us the process, it's really wonderful. No problem. Thank Thanks for having me, Melissa. Pleasure. We're here right now with the owner of MDC, and that's Vaughan Hindley. And we just want to talk to you personally about the new launch, which is so exciting, of the Fort SR series, which is the caravans that you put out for sealed roads. And we have had the best chat with James Field all about it, and he told us all about the mechanisms and the working of it, how it's all done out of the factory and, and the processes put in place. But I wanted to speak to you more about, I guess, as the owner of the company, what inspired you to make this change in the product range? Because a lot of people would have only thought that you, MDC, were always just going to do off-road caravans. Yeah, and it's not change. I guess it's evolving a new product line. Yeah. And where did this all come from? MDC being RV Map accredited, we're an ethical business. You know, you see on the TV a lot or on the internet of overweight vans on vehicles. I was wondering where you're going with overweight. <laughs> that, that, can't, that, you know, they're not legally available, able yeah. to tow. Okay. Um, and so our team, our sales team had been saying to us for several years is we have customers that come in that have light vehicles and can't tow an off-road caravan yeah. and we have to turn them away, which makes the customer unhappy because they've gone out of their way to visit a showroom. Mm. You know, they might be in the beginning of their journey um, to their thinking about caravanning and they're learning things and, you know, th their first experience is, sorry, you don't have a vehicle can actually tow this. Yeah. So the reason we brought in the Fort SR sealed road range is because they're a lot lighter. They have less features and benefits of our off-road range, but also they're made for going from caravan park to caravan park on sealed roads with your family, yeah. which can be a great introduction to actually caravanning and camping. Yeah. So it's a step up from, say, a tent or a rooftop tent, yeah. um, but you don't need a big, heavy, expensive vehicle. If you look at, uh, you know, when you're doing extensive touring mm. um, on outback roads, you know, you may choose... If you've got a larger caravan, you need something like a Land Cruiser or a Patrol. Or, yeah, which are expensive. They are. You know, they, they can be north of, you know, $100,000. Mm. So the idea was any customer that walks into our showroom will have a product here that will suit them and their family no matter what tow vehicle they have. Mm. Outside of maybe, I don't know, what's the lightest, smallest vehicle you can think of? Maybe a Jimny that has <laughs> a, you know... A, a tow ball weight capacity of 75 kilos <laughs> or around about that. I can't be sure. Basically a tinny. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we can, we'll have a product here that we can put behind yeah. your vehicle. Fantastic. So it all goes with the thing that MDC do a lot of firsts. So do you think this is this being a first for MDC putting out the sealed road range? Do you think this is going to enhance the off-road range? Or do you think they're just going to sit completely separate to each other? How do you sort of see the two ranges sitting together and working together? Yeah, I think they're a completely different customer. Mm -hmm. But what you might find is um, we'll get more customers for life. Yeah. And so people who are just starting out on their caravanning journey will go from caravan park to caravan park. And then once you've got that nailed down, you might go, okay, I want to go to the Big Red Bash. Mm you know, in the middle of Australia at Birdsville. Yeah. And so I need a more capable van. And so the idea being, if we can get someone into an MDC and over time, over 10, 12, 15 years, they might buy three or four, keep upgrading. We see that so much with our customers, actually. There's so many customers now that are on their fourth, they started out with the camper trailers and they just progress all the way through to different levels of caravans. That makes total sense. Absolutely. Yeah. So what about quality? Because you've built, spent a lot of time and a lot of money, a lot of research and development and put so much energy into having an incredibly high quality off-road product. Is the on-road product of the same ilk? Yeah. So for anyone who's not aware, MDC, we have an exclusive partnership with a factory in China mm -hmm. that we've grown up together over the years and we've had a lot of success. And so this new sealed road range is actually made in the same factory. So what are the benefits of that? 
we're using a supplier that we've known for over 10 years. Mm -hmm. We know that the quality is good. The parts are very similar, if not the same. And so, you know, we already have a big stock holding of all these parts in our factories um, in Australia. The QC process is exactly the same. The only differences between the products from a manufacturing perspective is the specifications of the on-road product. It's, it's lighter, there's less features and benefits, you know, the power yeah. systems are smaller, there's not as much solar, but you don't need that in that particular product. Yeah, it's appropriate. Yeah. You're travelling from caravan park to caravan park and you're hooking on the 240 volt power. You know, you don't need all the bells and whistles that you have um, off grid. But with that also comes a better price point. Yeah. So the SR range typically, well, you look at, they're cheaper than their off-road um, comparative size. Yeah. Um, but also some of the models are 30% less weight. Yeah. And so that's where you can tow them with smaller vehicles, which yeah. are typically cheaper to buy. I love it. So did it come from customers, the request for on-road? Did it come, was it, I know you guys have, James talked about it, that you have a think tank where you're always looking at innovating and new things to bring to market. Where did the idea come from? Was it a seed planted by somebody or you had yeah. a dream? <laughs> initially, well, initially it comes from our sales team. Yeah. But they're only going to hear it from the customers. Yeah, exactly. And so those things are put forward to our think tank. You know, yeah. we meet four to five times a year where we fly in um, all the people that are high up in the business yeah. and we talk about, you know, what are we going to be developing in 12 months' time, what's mm. changing in the market, you mm. know, what's the future. So our goal is to release three to four models per year. Yeah. James and his team have released seven models in six months. Yeah. Um, so crazy. they've been, you know, working frantically to put this together. Yeah. But we had to be first to market on from an on-road perspective. And, you know, we, we talk about um, other companies copying our product. Yeah. We know since we've released this range in the last few months that there's going to be more coming as well. Yeah, yeah. About as usual with the first. Yeah, which is fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because when you're the first, you're always changing and... Yeah. Shifting and shaping. And then we'll be into the next iteration. Exactly. When they get their first range off the ground. Well, congratulations. Awesome. I hope it's really successful. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening in. We really hope that you enjoyed it. If you want to see more from us, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Make sure that you comment down below and share with all of your camping buddies. And most importantly, why don't you join the Facebook group? It's called MDC and Oz RV Owners Group. And that's where you can go and get all of your camping questions answered.